Let's talk about how to render particles as well as get curved motion blur whenever you're working with Redshift. So here I have these particles, they're moving around in a circle, and I've cached this out to this torus blur network. I also have a P scale of 0.1, and right away, if I hit render, we're not going to see anything. We end up with a blank screen like this. And that's because we need to go to our Redshift OBJ tab, Particles, and say Render Object is Particles. Now that we have this, we press play, we now have particles. And just for demo purposes, I've also shaded this black so that we can easily see what's going on. Okay, so we have that. Let's look at Motion Blur now. If we go to our ROP, we want to say Redshift Motion Blur, Enable Motion Blur. And by default, it's not going to do anything. And that's because with Redshift, there are two main options that you need to be specific about when it comes to Motion Blur. Our first option is this Mesh Deformations Blur. So first of all, Mesh Deformations Blur needs a mesh. We can't have particles. We can't be rendering particles. So let's turn this off, this render object as particles. And here I've instanced some polygons to these points. So now we have these spheres along the points, and I have this transform which moves them around. We have that. Let's check Enable Mesh Deformations Blur right there. And now we have Motion Blur. This also works if we go to the top level. So if we go to this Geo Network and this transform, this Mesh Deformations Blur will also apply to anything up here. But again, we want to work with particles here. So let's go to our point wrangle and set our visibility up here. So we have our points. Let's turn this off. And now, instead of doing that, let's enable instance particles blur and also go to our torus blur network, Redshift OBJ, and turn this back on render object as particles. Now we have motion blur with our particles. And it's almost there. The problem, though, is that this should be a curved shape. Right now, the particles are being blurred in a straight line. And that's not exactly what the particles are doing. We want this blur to be curved. And so you might think to go to this deform particle steps and turn this up. Because the idea behind that is that if we have these, let's say, a point right here, these samples, right? And we're trying to figure out motion blur, right? If we calculate the in-between spots more times, this should give us a more accurate shape. This should give us more fidelity to draw out a proper motion blur line. However, what will happen when I press play is that we are left with the same exact thing. And this is because by default, Redshift is going to use your velocity when calculating motion blur and not try to figure out the actual in-between spots. So velocity, again, is just a position in space. We might have our original position right here and a velocity which describes the position where, where it's going to be in one second. So because it's thinking about velocity, it's not able to figure out all the in-between spots that are along this curved motion. And because of that, no matter how many steps you make, it's just going to calculate linearly like that. So what needs to happen instead is one of two things. First way that we can fix this is by deleting velocity. So attrib delete, let's delete V for velocity, set a render flag over here. And now we have curved motion blur. That's one way. There's actually a better way though, and that is if you go to the object level, select this network, go to settings, instancing, and go to point motion blur, we can be very specific by saying compute subframe geometry. And now by doing this, it's going to force Redshift to not look at the velocity, even if you have velocity within your stream. So now we have the same results. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. And that is, sometimes you run into an issue where things aren't being interpolated correctly. If I go here to, let's say, nine steps, and I re-kick this, sometimes you'll get this kind of results. 
And I'm not sure exactly why it works at five and it doesn't work at nine. However, there is a way around this. If we go and set a time warp right here, so time warp and set this before our render, we can say interpolate between input frames. So check that. And I'm also going to say our frame range is from one to 240, one to 240. So just the whole frame range of what we have. Now that we have this, our problem is fixed because we're relying on the SOP node to calculate all the in-between locations. And there you have it. Check out cgforge.com for more tutorials and thanks for watching.